Welcome to Legislative Updates. I'm your host, Doug Thompson. I've got two very special guests with me today. Right next to me is Scott Hill, the representative from the 70th District, which is Abilene and most of the free world. <laughs> <laughs> and then I've got, and then I've got uh, Dan Hawkins from the 100th District, which is also uh, Wichita area, and Dan is the Speaker of the House. And we're part of the free world, too. That's yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> we we go clear down uh, to that way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, you just finished up. The legislative work is done for this year. And Dan, why don't I start with you? Fill, fill us in on what's going on in the legislature. <laughs> that's a lot. I know that's it a was, lot. Uh, it was quite a session, Doug. I actually think our you know first session as speaker went very well. Uh, we had some wins. We had some losses. Uh, I would say probably one of our biggest disappointments uh, for most of us. Uh, was the governor over or vetoing the, our, our tax package. Yeah. I thought what was, what was really interesting about that, Doug, was the fact that she had went all over the state with her acts going to wherever she could go to in a grocery store with the media following her and filming and her going about axing the, the sales tax on food. She's going to ax the tax. Well, it's really kind of a bizarre twist of I actually think political spite that she ends up actually taking an ax to the tax relief to every <laughs> single person in this state. Wow, I, I, I would have never have guessed that. I actually thought we put together a very, very good mm -hmm. uh, uh, package. We had a package that had a, a, a single rate tax for the first time ever. Uh, it was 5.15. We had a uh, sales tax going to zero on food uh, in January 1, we had um, eliminating the cliff on the in, uh, income tax on Social Security, on our seniors. Uh, we had property tax relief. We had everything in there that you could possibly want, and we did it all in a responsible, very sustainable way. That tax package actually ended up being less than $500 million mm -hmm. a year. And when you've got two and a half billion dollars mm -hmm. in surplus, plus another 1.7 billion in a rainy day fund, we have the money to return money to our taxpayers. And, and, and it's very disappointing to us, but it really just shows you, the governor has said that she was governing from the middle and we wanted to meet her in the middle. Uh, we truly tried to, but you know, the Kelly Tolan administration decided to ax the tax relief. And, uh, and, and quite frankly, that was our biggest, that was truly our biggest uh, uh, disappointment. Uh, we actually thought we had the votes. We did have the votes to override her in the mm -hmm. House. Uh, the Senate, I know you've probably heard about the um, uh, re one Republican that decided to defect, you might say. And, and he'd voted for it twice, but then when it came time to override it, he decided mm -hmm. not to vote with us. So it really stopped it there. We didn't get a chance in the House to be able to override because it was a Senate bill. Senate bill override start in the Senate. House bill override start in the House. So we never did get an opportunity. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we aren't going to come back next year. Yeah. Uh, I truly believe next year one of the first things we will do is tee up another tax package. It may look a lot the same, may have a few differences because times change, you know, over the time. Uh, but we will come back with another tax package and we'll see if she wants to ax the tax relief again. Uh, I think if she does it twice, it's not going to be good for her. So okay. it, was, it was a sad, it was really a sad day, uh, day when she did that. Well, I, I can tell you this, Dan, I appreciate all of the work you put in on the, the legislative work that you've done this year. And I, and I really thought that that would be one that she would approve. I did too. Actually going into uh, the veto session, she still hadn't touched that bill. And on Monday was the last day for her to veto. It would have been Monday of last week uh, was her last veto day. And, and we really believed that she was not going to veto it uh, simply because it had a lot of stuff that she wanted. And it was also a very responsible uh, tax package. And so uh, when she came out on the last day and vetoed it, we were, we were stunned. We were truly stunned because uh, she had she had campaigned on it. She campaigned on being in the middle, campaigned on on doing away with the tax on food and, and of course the Social Security tax. So for us, um, it was it was truly stunning. We just didn't think it would happen. But but it does. Those uh, that's politics and and that's certainly campaign politics. You know sometimes our our governor has said things on the campaign trail that she doesn't really intend to follow up on. And in this case, 
you know, the Kelly uh, Tolan administration really bombed that for the people of Kansas. Uh, yeah. That's too bad, and she, she, she can't run again, can she? No, she's not running again, but uh, I guarantee you Tolan, uh, David Tolan, the lieutenant governor, is probably thought of as the next, go uh, the next nominee for the Democrat side. And, and that's the reason why literally I'm going across the state making sure everybody understands what the governor did mm -hmm. and how it affects them, because that truly is something that affects every single person in Kansas. I would agree with you. And we're going to cut away, take a break. We'll be right back. You're watching Legislative Updates. Welcome back to Legislative Updates. I'm your host, Doug Thompson. As you're looking at your screen on the outside is, uh, of course, uh, that's Dan Hill, 100th District Speaker of the House. Dan Hawkins. Dan Hawkins. I'm yeah. uh, just yeah. kidding you. <laughs> <laughs> always always, always that something we were related <laughs> somehow. <laughs> might be related somehow. <laughs> and Scott Hill in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> and so Scott, uh, you want me to call you Scott Hawkins or no, just, just, just Scott works okay, fine. Okay. So Scott, fill us in. You're the 70th district, and this is the first go around yeah. in the legislature. So. What, what have uh, you found? What, what's the good? What's the bad? Are you surprised with anything with it? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a there's a huge learning curve, Doug. I mean, I think everybody will tell you that. And uh, you know, there's there's some of that that's good. That's some of that that you kind of kind of got to go on when you don't really like the way things are going. And and uh, and you know, I think each of us get elected to change the world. And you go to Topeka and you realize that. The world has changed through cooperation, and uh, Dan did a fantastic job of leading the House this year and and establishing unity and cohesiveness. And so I think we had a very successful session. I think the you know for the average person out there, uh, the most wonderful thing about the legislature are the people that are there, because uh, you know we it's easy to to know our own legislator but not the other ones across the state. And when you get to know all the legislators across the state, uh, it's a fantastic group of people. And so the friendships you make there are are already strong. And, and so that's really a neat thing. Okay. And lots of hours are put into this over the, the time frame that you're there. I know there's a lot of hours in it. It's, uh, there are times that it, uh, we, we run really long hours. I'm, I'm a farmer, so uh, you know I'm used to working all night. So um, it, we got to do that a few times. 4.30 in the morning, wasn't Yeah, it? we did. Yeah. And uh, we got to see the sun, I got to see the sun come up on the way back to Abilene. So, uh, <laughs> wow. but, uh, but no, it's, uh, I, think, I think the number of hours is important, but also the quality of hours, you know, the committee meetings, the committee meeting process is, is a really enjoyable process. You get to have people come in and, and meet with you and, and express their opinions. And then the opportunity that we've had this year to, to vote on some, some important legislation. Um, and uh, then the, the process, we had uh, a governor that talked about meeting us in the middle and, and being bipartisan, and, and yet she vetoed 30 pieces of legislation altogether. And so we had the opportunity to uh, work together to get some of those mm -hmm. overridden. And, th and that process was, was it, it was stressful but fulfilling. Yeah, and what are you on committees? Yeah, I my work is primarily with education. I'm on two education committees, uh, but then I also uh, am on a, a veterans and military affairs committee, which w is really enjoyable with with uh, Fort Riley right here. Um, you know, it, it's it's very pertinent to what a lot of our district is. There's a lot of retired military people here and a lot of active duty military people here, so um, that was nice to be able to work on some things there. Yeah, I, I would well imagine that would be the situation. What have you, what do you feel like you were successful in accomplishing and what were you disappointed with? Well, I, I mean, uh, from the education perspective, we, we got a, an education funding package uh, that, that passed out during veto session uh, and uh, we hope will, will be sustained. Uh, that funds our schools and it, and, it, and it did a real nice job of that. Well, while starting to touch on a little bit of what we know across the state and across the nation that uh, there are needs for changes in education. Um, there is some dissatisfaction of, of the results that are coming out and uh, so we started to look at that a little bit. We had, and so that was probably a disappointment. We also had some more school reform issues that were, that didn't make it through. 
um, and we didn't uh, we did not uh, increase special ed funding as much as some people would have liked, but we did get some uh, uh, increase in the amount of money that special ed gets. So those are some things that were important to us. Um, one of the things that I worked on personally was uh, working to uh, get a new veterans home established in Topeka. And so I did a little bit of work on that. And uh, so that was fun too. So. What, what do you mean by a veterans home? It would be, it's like a retirement home for oh, veterans. Okay. And we have two currently in the state and uh, both of them are a long ways from one's in Winfield and one's out at Dodge City. And uh, so this would be closer to where the majority of our veterans are at is in Eastern Kansas. And so the idea is to uh, establish a, a new veterans home there and uh, we're applying to the federal government for money to do that. So. How many people will it house? Uh, I believe this new one is, I believe it was 75 or That's something good. like that. So, That's good, yeah. that, I'm sh certain there's a need. There is, yeah, and we have a lot of veterans that are aging and reaching the point, you know, of disability that they need to be in, in a care facility. And so that's, you know, like your veterans that came out of the Vietnam and, and Korea and, and then newer than that are, are getting to that point. So, yeah. Okay. What is the uh, most difficult thing you've had to deal with in coming into the legislature? Because there's a learning curve. It doesn't matter if you come into high school or college yeah. or anything. Understanding the, understanding the procedure uh, I've had a little bit of background in parliamentary procedure and, and but, but you know, we have layer, new layers in, in, in the legislature. I mean, we, we have a, a lot of rules and, and they're important rules and they make, they make things go well, but you just need to know how everything works. And, you know, one of the things that's really interesting is that, you know, we'll have committee hearings and you think, well, we heard this idea and, and now we're kind of done with it. Well, no, that's not the way it works. It, it goes through the process and, and it may come back two or three times. You may vote on it two or three times. And, and so I think it's safe to say one of the things you learn is that nothing's ever really dead, you know, until, you're, until you hit signy die. Uh, there's always a chance of and things coming. And then it's still coming. not dead. Yeah, and then it's still not <laughs> dead. May come back later, huh? <laughs> yeah, well, we're in a two-year session, so we, so we start yeah. all, we uh, have all that sitting on the table when we come back. And as you start into the off-season now, if we can yeah. refer to it that yeah. way, wh what, what do you do now? I know you're a farmer, so you'll be busy with that, but do you do any of the legislative work at this, sure. at this time frame, too? Uh, you know, and I think a, a big part of, of being a legislator is is representing your people and your constituents and so I mean this is part of that visiting with people going to events talking to people uh, I of course am, have a big interest in education so I meet with all of my superintendents and and school board members and and so you know I make it a personal goal to do two or three events every week uh, which Good is a little bit challenging when when we're busy in farming season and, and like right now if it would rain would help it quite a little bit yeah. so if you if you've got any uh, advice on how to get rain well, if you guys would, can vote to vote that yeah. in why well, you'll be in pretty you know good shape what, I, with it i think that bill was on the table and we just ran out of time <laughs> <laughs> i got you i got you we're going to cut away take a break you're watching legislative updates we'll be right back Welcome back to Legislative Updates. I'm your host, Doug Thompson. In the middle right here, Scott Hill from the 70th District, and of course, Dan Hawkins. And Dan, uh, first off, thank you for all the work that you do, because I know, I know that, uh, and I've heard this already, that from the time you get up there, and um, whether it's as the speaker, right on through, it is full time. It there's, is. there's interruptions for you and et cetera, but uh, I know it's a lot of work, and thank you for doing it. Here a while back, I was uh, actually doing a speech at the Packenherb Club in Wichita, and the um, the uh, opinion editor of the Wichita Eagle, Dion Leffler, was there, and he had just written a piece about how we don't work 20 hours a week. And I so I at the start of that speech, I said, you know, I said I would like whoever wrote that, and I knew who wrote it. Whoever wrote that, I would like for them to be there with me. At 6:30 in the morning, when I get to the state house, mm -hmm. and stay with me until I leave, because usually it's six o'clock at night or later, and I work through my lunch. Oh, by the way, and uh, never did hear anything from him. He didn't have anything to say after I'd said that. Just so. put the pen down and said, "Yeah, there, huh? <laughs> he did." But you know, uh, we 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 
we truly have had a very successful year this year. Uh, we did not anticipate the governor vetoing 30 pieces of legislation, like Scott said. Uh, matter of fact, that you have to go back over 30 years to find a governor that's vetoed that many. And I can't even remember the guy's name. It was way back, probably before I was born, um, that that governor vetoed like 56. The next closest was uh, Governor Finney, who, he, who vetoed 26 one time. So in recent memory... Uh, the Kelly Tolan administration has the uh, record for the most vetoes. And sometimes when you look at the vetoes that they did, you just shake your head. Why did they do mm -hmm. that? Um, we don't understand. We don't understand why they veto certain bills, but they did. Uh, so it was our job to come back during veto session and actually get uh, an opportunity to override those vetoes. And we analyzed them when we got back. Uh, we got back on... Um, well, it had been a week ago last Monday, and uh, we spent the first two days really going through all the bills, trying to determine which one we had a shot at. Uh, and once we did that, uh, then on Wednesday, we started in, and we spent uh, literally all day Wednesday working on vetoes well into the evening. Um, I can't even remember how late we went that, that evening, but we went pretty late. And then the next morning, we came back in and uh, finished it up. So we... We took a shot at 19 veto overrides. The House won 13 of them. Uh, the Senate missed on a couple of them. Uh, so we actually had 11 bills that were actually overridden and became law. Uh, so that's pretty impressive. We actually did, the House actually did 11 overrides in one day, which is also a record. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so we were, we were really busy people. Uh, but some of them were really big items. Uh, probably, uh, you know, I, I was asked by... Uh, media media person this morning in Topeka, what was the biggest thing that you overrode? And truly the biggest one was the Born Alive bill. Mm -hmm. And I think we've probably talked about that in the past here on, on another session, but uh, the Born Alive bill was a bill that, that basically says that if a baby is born through a botched abortion and, and, and is born alive, then that baby is to be given the same exact health uh, treatment that any baby of the same gestation would get. Uh, so you're not just going to set it over on a steel table and let it die. You have to give it life, uh, life-saving uh, treatment. You know, the, the governor vetoed that, and I still will never understand why. I can't, can you just imagine, just, you just think, close your eyes and think about the fact that this baby is alive, and instead of giving it the treatment and the care it's needed, you just set it over onto a steel table and let it die. I don't understand how anybody can do that. I don't even, I don't even understand how the governor could think that was the right thing to do. I don't either. I don't understand that no. one at all. So. And, and, and we overrode that in fine fashion. I think yeah. we had 86 votes, we did. I believe. We had a couple extras. Because yeah. uh, we had, yeah. a, we had some, a couple of Democrats that came yeah. on board with us. Uh, so that was a very important bill for us, and we actually started first with that. That was the first one we did out the gate. We wanted to kind of set uh, set tone, set a tone as we started. And in fact, we went five bills in a row yeah, before we, we finally lost yep. one. Mm -hmm. uh, we won five overrides in a row. Um, another big one that, that was, uh, it was actually one of the last ones we did was the Women's Bill of Rights. And the B Women's Bill of Rights is all about all about making sure that women are safe in women's spaces. You know, whether it's whether it's restrooms, locker rooms, um, uh, women in prison having their own space and not having a biological male with them. It's making sure that they are safe and that they're protected in those spaces where they should have a an expectation to be safe. It was, it, was, it was a landmark piece of legislation because mm -hmm. in there, we had to define what a woman and a man mm -hmm. is. First place in the United States to have legislation like this. So Kansas mm -hmm. is number one. We do know that there's eight other states that are out there working on the same type of legislation. And I think Kansas probably gave them a lift up in making sure that they could get it done before they end too. So that was another big piece of legislation. legislation. But we had... There, there was a couple of them that we lost that was really a shame besides the tax bill, losing the tax bill. We had a, a deal on child care. You know, one of the biggest problems we have today is in the workforce is people need to have 
good child care so they can go to work. And so we had a bill, a child care bill, that was basically rolling back some of the, leg the regulations that had been put on child care centers to where they could watch more children. And we really made it to where it was really uh, consistent with other states around us. So we weren't doing anything landmark in this. We were just really just rolling back some regulations so we could get more child care. And the governor vetoed it, and we were not able to get that one passed. Uh, we came up about four votes short of being able to get that done. So that was really a disappointment. Uh, another, another one that was really kind of a surprising disappointment was there was a, 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 an EDU bill. It was, it was basically a bill uh, that, that, that schools could use to teach children firearm safety. And, it was, and it's really simple. It is don't touch. Um, I can't even you remember. Check with an adult. Call an adult. Call an adult. Don't get touch. away from yeah, it. Just yeah. get away. It was four things that the that they were to, to do. It was kind of like stop, drop, and roll uh, mm -hmm. when you know, they're taught. You know when when there's right. a fire. Same type of thing for that. Just just tell an adult don't touch it, and and you get somebody to take care of that gun. The governor vetoed that, and we we came up one vote short of being able to override that veto. So that was kind of a surprising one. Um, there was many more. We could talk about many more, okay. but we had a good let, session. Let me cut away, take a break. You're watching Legislative Updates. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Legislative Updates. I'm your host, Doug Thompson, with my guest, of course, Scott Hill from the 70th. Thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. I know this is the first go around, and there's a learning curve with it, but uh, I hear you're doing an awesome job. Dan, thank you so much for what you're doing, and, uh, and I know there's a learning curve, but you've already been through all <laughs> yeah. of that, and so thank you so much for you guys doing what you're doing and the good job that you've done, and uh, really appreciate it. Thank you thank a lot, you. Doug. I appreciate Thanks, you, you allowing us to come on. Right. Thanks for watching. See you next time on Legislative Updates. Hope you have enjoyed this segment of Legislative Updates. I'm Doug Thompson. Tune in next time for another Legislative Update.